like I said, I will never want to write Batman or thing because I've never really those characters have um even though I love them so much, they have no connection to me on that level that where I'd want to actually step out and write them. So if you if you want to if you get the opportunity to write them, you do a research. And the reason I say about research is because when I was think when I was my my brother um who introduced me to my own uh, culture, right? Uh, uh, in about 2005, when I was at film school, he said, do you know about our history of how we came to Fiji? And I said, what do you mean? Like, I thought we'd always been there because I hadn't really thought about that. I'm, I was, I've was i been here in New Zealand since I was about eight or seven or eight, right? And so I have no connection on that historical level to Fiji. So, or, you know, and so, because I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not Kiwi, right? If you're 40 years in, in the country, you're that country, and your culture, you 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 um, you gravitate towards that culture, you gravitate to your friends in that culture, you know, so on, and you become, you know, your whole mindset's become where you live, especially after 40 years, right? So at that time, I guess I was 20 something, 30 years old, uh, 32, yeah, 2005. So he, yeah, it was just he sent me an email and said, hey you know, mess on Facebook, I said, hey, and I said, no, no. So I sat down for five years, read as many books as I could and researched the whole uh, diaspora and the Gurumit era, which is what's called in Fiji, which is a breakdown of the word indenture, right? Um, it's a kind of like uh, Gurumit, agreement. So Indians, because they couldn't pronounce the word agreement, they thought it was Gurumit. So now we're all called, they were called Gurumits. So the idea of that is, uh, researching into that, I found about how we ended up there, how I, one of the first ships that came there, crashed there uh, in Suva, on the bay there, because there's rocks, huge, huge rocks under the water there. The first ship came in with these laborers and crashed. This is about 19, sorry, 1885. So in 1885, right? Um, this is after 15 years after slavery. So slavery all across the world ended in about 1860. So because there was all these plantations going to rot around the world where slaves had been used for labor, right? Uh, so what happened was then they said, well, we got all these plantations. Thanks, Alex. Thank you, brother. Alex has said, uh, keep doing these videos, mate. I thoroughly enjoy your talks. Cheers, man. I'm I try to come up with as new content as I can. So yeah, so the Grimmett era. So 1885, right? So 15 years after all the all this all these plantations are just basically going to ruin. And so they decided uh, the British Commonwealth decided that all their Commonwealth countries, Fiji was part of it, New Zealand was part of it, Australia's part of it, and Mauritius, um, Ghana, so many other countries, uh, Malaysia, Philippines, uh, I think Indo as well. So wherever you see a a, a tiger. That's where Indians in that time moved to. That's why you see some of the Asian countries like Malaysia and Philippines, they have slightly browner skin, right? Because of that, because they basically married into that, uh, into those, into their community, into the Asian community, Orient community, right? Um, so, and they were just not, they weren't just like Indians. They were um, Muslims, they were like Sri Lankans, uh, North Indians, South Indians, so many uh, cultures moved into there. So, so, but, so basically what had happened was, and this is part of my, my own graphic novel that I've, that I've put aside. I've, I've done about 40 pages of that I've put aside. It's going to be about 120 pages or so. So it's called The Gurumit. And um, talking about which, just in case. I'll... So way back when, so when I found out, I asked my, uh, my friend, James Collins, who I went to a film school with at the time, who was an artist, Right, uh, and there's an artist now as well to do a um, I commissioned him to rep to do a representation of um, that situation right and how, how terrible it was for them and stuff so before getting to travel so basically you know the British Commonwealth shipped out um, no what happened was that they basically went into India and said well what's our biggest population uh, you know as part of our Commonwealth well, Indians, right? People living in India at the time, you know, um, these people would love, you know, we've got all these plantations all over the world, across the islands, across the mainlands and other countries. And Africa, I forgot to mention Africa. 
right? That, that's why there's a huge, huge generations of and people in, uh, in Africa, Indians in Africa. And, um, and so, so what they did was they would have like all these um, people, right, who would sometimes cheat people into and lie to them to tell them, hey, Fiji's for us, right? Let's, I'm having research for you, so for five years, so I'm just talking about Fiji. So Fiji is just across there. This is just the island just across, you know, a hundred miles down the road, you know, across the ocean. Yeah, you you can come back and visit whenever you want, right? So, but a lot of them, this, um, you know, a bit more business-minded, doctors, nurses, uh, engineers and stuff, they understood how far it was because they could look it up on the on the map that it was at the time. This is 1885. But a lot of the poor people had no idea. And some of them like basically were lied to to get them on the ship because the people like the salespeople, right, would be out there. Um, the sales rep will be for the companies will be out there going, hey, 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 you'll get so much money. You'll get so much money. You'll go so many years. You can come back. It'll be all fine and all this. So the, the, the idea was to um, sign a contract, the agreement, the indenture labor agreement for five years, and then you could come back. So they ended up in Fiji. And like I said, the first boat crashed. The ship, Leonidas, crashed off the coast of Fiji as it was coming into the harbor. Uh, some, a lot of people drowned and a lot of people actually died on the way there. Uh, through malaria, through scurvy, through starvation, uh, lack of water, uh, so many different things, diseases and stuff, and on the way there. So many ships came. So that's what the Gurmit graphic novel, when it's finished, will be about. But so I didn't know about all this. So I went and researched for five years because I wanted to know, because I wanted to know my history. And so, and at the start, I got really angry uh, because of the treatment they got. And then I listened to other things. I read the other historical things. And then I realized that I'm here because of what they went through. But also a lot of them were willing to come because they wanted a better life. I know the extremely poor people, because Fiji, uh, India, and it still has that, is a caste system, which means whatever uh, level of poverty you are born into, or religious uh, level, right, whatever level you're born in, that's your entire life. You can never get past that. You will always be in there, unless somehow you get education. That's, excuse me, it's getting quite hot in here. Yeah, back. Had to open the window. Now the breeze is coming through. So, yeah, so whatever uh, car system, because of none of your, none of your, because nothing you ever did, you just were born into that family, into that village that's where you're ever going to stay for the rest of your life. So a lot of people just said, yeah, get me on that boat. Get me the hell out of here. Get me out of, um, get me out of India. I, I would like to raise my children in another place. I'm willing to work five years to do that. And I learned that once you understand history and you're open to understand both sides of it, that you don't become angered. You, you, become educated and you actually have a, a better outlook on life you appreciate the good and you understand the bad and that allows you to basically have a better idea about how to treat people of all cultures how to um, how to appreciate what's gone before and what's uh, what's to come and you decide to be the positive things in life and not the negative things sure there's been some you know you can say well this is how my people were treated. This is how that happened. And if you carry that on your back as a chip, you'll pass that on to your children. And I see that all the time. I see, uh, I see that. I, I come across that uh, in my, you know, in my life, where people are just basically don't want to point out the negatives in their own culture, but they're very, very happy to point out the negatives in other culture. And so I, I kind of look at myself, and I, and I'm always active about my own culture because I want to point out to people that we have negative things in our culture. If I see bad behavior in our culture, I point it out. If I see bad behavior in my own culture, in my own self, 
I pointed out, and I apologize for it. You know, because I think that's the way to go forward is to appreciate uh, the negative and the positives in your culture, but always, always try to bring a balance to that without just pushing the negative narrative about it. And so, you know, so, you know, um, when people start writing um, comic books with an agenda right now, which is for the last five years has been all about gender. That's why the failure of the comic book industry, mainstream Marvel and DC is so prominent right now. That's why people just can't handle it because they want to write books about from the negative side, like saying racism is bad. Don't you know racism is bad? Everybody knows racism is bad. Don't you know treating people is bad? Um, in a bad way is bad? Everybody knows that. Don't you know bad behavior is bad? Everybody knows that. You don't have to throw that at people's faces, you know, because, and you don't have to say everybody in that culture is bad because we know that ev not everybody in my culture isn't bad. There are some amazing people in my culture, but there are some really, really bad people in my culture. And some of them have prominent places. That's why when um, um, talking about locally, talking about uh, Shane um, Jones talked about the radical, radical Indians. I was like, he's right. They only care about pushing an agenda, those radicals. The quiet ones in our community who are really working hard and just, just going about the business, you know, running the stores, run, looking after families, going to temple, whatever. They just do, going about their business like normal Kiwis do. So, but then there will have the activists who will be out there saying, you know, blah, blah, blah. Those are the ones that actually ruin it for everybody else. But sometimes, you know, uh, us with, you know, with the more prominent, I guess, uh, or are more vocal on the other side would say, look, guys, tone it down. That's one that needs to be done. It's like, look, you're not doing anyone any good. And that's what, so when I was start writing that, I thought, hold on, I need to, when I first read the first, uh, first 40 pages, I was like, really aggro, um, because there was a lot of mistreatment. But then out of that came such a good things. That our people could just be born now and go over, you know, over the last five generations, travel to the, around the world, get on the bus. Uh, I mean, sorry, get on a sh on a boat, get on a plane, raise children everywhere else because the parents worked hard through all that trouble. They worked so hard. Um, so, like I said, I read a lot of books just to understand before I decided to write that. And so when then I decided, well, hold on, hold on. You're a bit angry right now. This is not the way to write a book. Let's just put that aside. Just chill out for a little while and then come back to it when you actually have a better understanding of the positive as well. And I have for the last five years. Like I, I started in about 2009, uh, 2008, 2009. I started working on it. So I got 40 pages done, full color. Got, got it done. I was doing everything myself. And then I just stopped writing it. I have the whole entire story written, I mean, outlined done. Um, and so I stopped writing it and I thought, okay, we'll just leave it for a little while and come back to it when I'm in a happier, more positive mood. And that might be another five years before I still finish it. But I mean, I'm in a, you know, I want to see that book succeed as a good, as a historical thing because it's a, it's a fictional history based romantic book, right? Uh, with a love story. But also, saying what happened, not sugarcoating anything, but actually showing that these two people got through that and how they got through that well, while showing the actual reality of what was there and who helped them. We never, we, none of us are where we are without anybody helping us, right? Without our families helping us, without our neighbors helping us. We're not where we are now on our own, right? We didn't lace up our boots by ourselves. Our mom and dad had to teach us how to tie our boots, right? Or tie our shoes. I talk about boots because I used to wear Doc Martens in my teens. 